Let's go back to our Redrum instance. Right click Redrum and click Create M class Equalizer. Now we're just going to gently boost a few frequencies. Be careful not to boost things too much or it will make this, the volume too loud and it might clip. Okay, so we're going to use Param 1 to emphasize around the 100 hertz mark just to bring out that bassiness of the kick drum there. So turn it up by about 6 decibels and let's widen the bandwidth as well so it affects a larger area. And then we're going to use Param 2 around the 2.5 kilohertz mark. Use shift if you want to get more control over the frequency knob and then turn the gain up again by about six decibels and widen the bandwidth and this is just going to really bring out the click of the kick drum and the attack of the clap. Sounds like a dodgy 50s movie. Anyway, now we've done that, if we have a listen to it that's with the equalizer, without the equalizer, with again. You see how it's a lot more defined? Brilliant. So, and now we've done that, we're going to bring out all the volumes of the samples to a similar level with some tape compression. You could use the M-Class compressor, but I recently learned how awesome Scream 4 is at making drums sound freaking awesome. So, right click the equalizer, create, Scream 4 distortion. Now, select the tape option, and turn the damage control to about 100. Now, let's have a listen to this with the Scream 4 distortion unit. So, without it, and with it. Notice how much more prominent the drums are now? Sweet, huh? I'll just explain a bit about what tape compression is. Before digital audio, engineers could overload the signal on a multi-track tape recorder, creating what is called magnetic tape saturation, basically a natural compression of the sound, which sounds awesome. In Scream 4, the P1 knob here controls the speed, simulating the tape running at different speeds. This translates to the unit allowing more or less of the high frequency sound through. P2 controls the compression, turning it clockwise increases the compression ratio. If you turn it all the way to zero, then you can get a really dirty distorted sound. Just like that. But yeah, if you do it a bit more naturally, then you get a much nicer sound. So for this beat, I'm going to use a P1 value, if I show you how this changes, of about 85. And a P2 value of about 75. Okay, so we've got a powerful beat. Next, we're going to add a nice simple shaker for the chorus. I say simple, it'll have four effects units on it to make it fit in nicely. So, let's minimize this beat for now. And let's create a combinator and call it shaker. Inside the combinator, right click, create Dr. Rex loop player. Now, I'm going to choose a loop from within Reason's factory sound bank have a look at the Dr. Rex percussion loops. There's some really good ones. But I'm going to choose this Shaker 3, which is quite cool. See, it's not very prominent and for dance music that's not really going to be heard very well. So that's why we need to add all these effects that we're going to do right now. But first we're going to copy it to the sequencer. So right click and copy Rex loop to track. And now, before I do anything else, I'm just going to take off the end of each of these See, so yeah, I've taken off the tail end of the loop here, so it stops on the fourth beat. This stopping and starting gives a really cool jerkiness to the sound, something a lot of Electro House has. Now we've got the loop in the sequencer, if we have a listen. Sweet. It's time to make it sound better. So, let's right click Dr. Rex, and go Create, and Scream for Distortion Unit. We're going to select Tape again and set the damage control, yeah, that 70 is fine. Set the P1 to at 90, just take that down a bit, so it's not too much high end going through there. And then bring the P2, yeah, just bring that down a little bit to about almost 50, yeah, that'll do. Now, in the cut section, bring the mid up nicely to about 40, because this is going to be mostly mid. Oh, useful tip, um, hold control and click a value to set it to its default value. The shaker will be more mid than high end in this song. The synths will be mostly in the high end. And since we don't have any pads or anything filling out the mid range, it'll sound empty without the shaker in there in the choruses. Next, right click and create 
an ECF42 envelope controlled filter. Take the resonance to 42, the meaning of life, the universe and everything. Take the frequency up to about 80 and select band pass mode. Now if we have a listen to this now. Sounds kind of like a toothbrush, I guess. But yeah, the band pass is just allowing a small band of frequencies through, removing the piercing high end and the bassier unnecessary low end. Next, we're going to widen the sound and cut out any remaining low end. Let's right click, create an M-class stereo imager. Take the crossover frequency to about 1.8 kilohertz. Now if you take a listen to what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna hit the solo high band that completely removes anything below 1.8 kilohertz here. And then if we just widen it a little bit as well. So that just moves it further left and right in the stereo field. So it feels a bit bigger. Finally, we're going to add a maximizer to limit the sound. So right click, create M class maximizer. Take the input gain up to about seven decibels. So we've got just to boost the volume a bit and then hit the four milliseconds look ahead. This looks ahead by 4 milliseconds, shocking right, and sees if any sound is coming. If it is, it limits it, meaning there's no chance of the input sound being louder than the 0 decibel reference point. Anything above this causes nasty digital distortion. This is called brick wall limiting. Okay, so if we have a listen to that. I think I'll just take the shaker down a bit in the mix here. But yes! There we have an Electro House beat that kicks you in the face harder than David Beckham mistaking you for a football. Tune in for day two where I'll be showing you how to make a dirty, sexy Electro House bass line to go on top of our beat. See you tomorrow. If you found this tutorial useful, help me out by rating this video or posting a comment so other people can find it. And don't forget to check out my website, boyinaband.com. Have a nice day.